Do you ever look at something like a wind turbine or an oil platform and wonder how exactly it got there? Well, today you're going to find out. Join me as we take a look at the 15 most epic transport operations of all time. Number 15. Bullwinkle Bullwinkle may be the name of a certain moose from our childhood, but it's also the name of one of the largest oil platforms in the world. Bullwinkle is a fixed steel oil platform installed in the Gulf of Mexico in 1988. And when you see something as big as this, you can't help but scratch your head and ask yourself how it got there, especially since it's in the middle of the ocean. At the end of the 1980s, Bullwinkle was the third tallest freestanding structure in the world, standing 1,736 feet tall, with over 1,300 feet below the waterline. The oil platform jacket is what sits mostly submerged, and before it made its way into the Gulf, it took three years to build in Texas by Gulf Marine fabricators and cost about half a billion dollars. But the hard part really began after the completion of Bullwinkle's jacket, when the contractors took on the job of transporting the 49,000-ton, 1,400-foot-tall structure from the construction yard over land and then over water using a barge. The entire process took five whole days. Bullwinkle is the second tallest object to ever be moved from one location to another, and after all that work, it will be decommissioned by the end of its economic life, meaning it will likely have to be moved again. Number 14. Troll A Platform So then what's the tallest object ever in need of a transport operation? Well, look no further than the Troll A Platform, a natural gas platform, only this time in the cold waters off the coast of Norway. Troll A Platform was built using reinforced concrete and towed into the North Sea back in 1996. The Troll A Platform stands over 1,500 feet tall and weighs well over 1 million tons, with its four concrete legs extending close to 1,000 feet below sea level. So when you move something that big, there's no possible way to do it discreetly. So much like the structure itself, the transport operation was such a big event that it was televised and millions of people watched as engineers and contractors dropped these hollow concrete legs into the ocean and then filled them with water to let them sink to the floor and settle with their 130-foot tall vacuum anchors. This gives a whole new definition to the term sea legs. But once the dust had settled, the engineers were able to float the massive platform over onto the legs and attach everything together. It was a pretty tense process, especially since the platform itself is so big that it takes close to 10 minutes to walk from one end to the other. Number 13. Asta Hunstein Spar Hasta la vista, baby! The Hasta Hunstein Spar is a floating production, storage, and offloading unit for natural gas, about 186 miles from shore in the Norwegian Sea, and is the first platform of its kind to sit on the Norwegian continental shelf. But that's not the only record this spar has broken. The Asta Hunstein Spar also happens to be the largest spar platform ever built in terms of diameter and displacement. It stands at 650 feet tall, with 580 feet being submerged beneath the water and a diameter of about 164 feet across. But instead of working from the ground up, engineers built the Asta Hanstein Spar on its side on barges in the dry dock. Once it was finally built and ready to go, they hauled it off on the floating barges and then eventually onto the Dockwise Vanguard, the largest ship of her kind, for a full 60 days in 2017 and was eventually upended in the waters of Klosterfjorden. But the work wasn't done, because now the Asta Hunstein Spar needed to be transported vertically to the gas field off the northwest coast of Norway before it was moored almost 4,000 feet into the seabed. Number 12. NASA's Crawler Transporters Sometimes it's hard to distinguish science fiction from reality, and NASA has made that task even more difficult with the Crawler Transporters. Looking like they're ready to haul spice across the deserts of Tatooine, the crawler transporters have served a number of purposes, but one thing they always do is haul massive cargo. Perhaps their most famous loads are the Saturn rockets for the Apollo programs. NASA has just two of these in their arsenal, each costing $14 million, and when they were completed, the crawler transporters were the largest self-powered land vehicles in the world. Each one gets around on eight tracks, giving them enough surface area to carry a mass of 6 million pounds, and they're about 131 by 144 feet. These things are pretty intense, and it takes a team of about 30 engineers, technicians, and of course drivers to operate just one vehicle, all huddled together in the control room. 
And when they're not lugging around space rockets, NASA crawler transporters have even lugged around space shuttles. When it comes to massive transport operations, NASA knows exactly what they're doing. Number 11, Bagger 288. And now we've come to the granddaddy of them all, the Bagger 288. The Bagger 288 has had the honor of being the biggest land vehicle in the world for the last 40 years. Standing eight stories tall and weighing 13,500 tons, so just don't look down if you're ever lucky enough to operate this crazy excavator. So at 315 feet high and 788 feet long, this behemoth needs just over 16 kilowatts of external power to keep the 70-foot bucket wheel churning all day. This excavator was built by the Krupp company for Rheinbraun to go to work at a strip mine in Germany and can extract 240,000 tons per day. And it only took 23 years for the Bagger 288 to totally exhaust the mine for good. And in 2001, despite its size, the Bagger 288 went for a 14-mile road trip to the Gosweiler mine, running on its 12 Caterpillar tracks. Just imagine seeing this behemoth driving down the street. You'd think that it was on its way to fight Godzilla. Number 10. Space Shuttle Endeavor If you were living in Los Angeles, California during 2012, then you may remember this one. Space shuttles are meant to go to space, duh. But what happens to them when they become decommissioned? Do they go to the great gig in the sky? Well, the space shuttle Endeavour didn't. NASA's orbiter was finally retired after 25 missions, and the organization decided to hand it over to the California Science Center in Los Angeles. But how exactly were they going to get it there? Well, the Endeavour was delivered to the International Airport LAX and then transported through the streets of Los Angeles. The transport operation was incredibly slow, taking three days before it made it to the Science Center, giving local bystanders a free once-in-a-lifetime parade. But it wasn't easy, because as you can imagine, the streets of LA are notorious for their traffic, so streets were closed down to cars and there were many instances where the only thing between the shuttle's wings and telephone poles, homes and apartment buildings, was just about an inch of space. One wrong move to the left and that's it. The city of LA had to remove street lights, traffic signals, and even 400 trees along the street to make the move possible. In the end, the entire endeavor ran up a bill of about $200 million. Number 9. Toshiba Engine In 2010, the Texas Department of Transportation took on a pretty big job. But how big was it? Try an 850-ton job. They needed to move a massive Toshiba steam turbine engine from the port of Houston to a power plant in Riesel. And if you're making the trip on a normal day, it's about a two and a half hour drive. So just imagine doing that with that big of a haul. The Department of Transportation had to put together a custom rig made of two truck cabs and a whopping 520 tires. It may not be the most elegant transport operation in the world, but it certainly got the job done. This makeshift vehicle that only a place like Texas could have ever had the wherewithal to come up with was about 360 feet long, the size of a football field, but only about 39 feet wide. The Toshiba engine was moved 250 miles from one city to the next using state roads and even crossed 82 bridges and went so slow that it only moved 10 miles a day. Better to be safe than sorry, I guess. And when it was all said and done, the Texas Department of Transportation claimed that the Toshiba steam turbine engine was the heaviest load to ever be moved such a distance within the state. Number 8. Levitated Mass Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and that's certainly the case with the next entry on our list. Art comes in many forms, and when it comes to the levitated mass at the LA County Museum of Art, well, depending on who you ask, it's really just a giant rock. This 340-ton boulder was discovered in a valley in Riverside County, California, and $10 million later was brought to the museum. Perhaps taking a page out of Greek myth, a crew was hired to transport this 21-foot-high, 340-ton behemoth across 85 miles from the valley to the museum. The levitated mass would go on to be the largest boulder ever moved as they hoisted her onto a massive 176-wheeled transporter truck, driving at night on roads that were closed off to all other traffic so they could take up as much space as they needed without causing a stir. But if you think this 176-wheeler was burning rubber down the open road, then think again, because it inched its way at 10 miles per hour. And going that slow, it took a week and a half to complete the journey. Now the levitated mass sits perched above visitors who are brave enough to walk underneath it. Number 7. Wind Turbine Blades Up Bauding Mountain 
Even if you're moving at a snail's pace, driving a big rig down a closed off street at night may seem like an easy task, no matter what you're holding back there. But how about moving up a precarious mountainside? Well, that's exactly what the task engineers and drivers in China needed to accomplish in 2017, when some wind turbine blades needed to be moved. Each blade weighed in at 80 tons and was 172 feet long and needed to be moved one by one up China's Baoding Mountain. And for those of you out there that don't know, it's over 1,300 feet tall. Each truck had to travel slowly, steadily, and carefully up the skinny and windy roads where one false move could have easily ended in disaster. And with each sharp turn up the mountain, the trucks needed to pivot the blades perfectly to get them to fit between the gaps. Yes, bringing these wind turbine blades is a case of epic transport operations, but it's also a case of epic driving. Number 6. British Power Transformer If you thought a long truck driving at 10 miles an hour was a slow day, then just wait until you hear about this next entry on our list. In 2013, Britain saw the largest object ever to be transported across her royal roads, a power station transformer that weighed 640 tons. That's one big piece of equipment, and it needed something even bigger to get it to where it needed to be. So a ridiculous 328-foot long and 16-foot wide vehicle was used to haul the transformer at just 4 miles an hour. 4. The endeavor took 9 months just to plan, and the vehicle was accompanied by another 20 vehicles, including police cars. But because British law prevents police from escorting large loads at night, the entire thing happened during the day while the roads were still open. The fully laden vehicle took up two lanes of highway and caused a traffic jam that went back for 13 miles. That's one commute home from work that you don't want to be stuck in. Number 5. Petrochemical Splitter Memowit is a private Dutch company that specializes in the hauling of massive objects, but nothing have could prepare them for this one. Dacro Industries in Canada needed one of their giant splitters moved across the highways to another facility where it would help to process propane and convert it to the recyclable plastic polypropylene, which is used for all sorts of things we use every day, like Tupperware, medical equipment, and even computers. So needless to say, it was important to get the ball rolling in this 300-foot-tall, 800-ton splitter. It turned out to be the biggest load to have ever been transported along Alberta highways. Memowit employed a transport crew who combined six trucks to help push and pull, and then for another two double-26 line trailers to bring the splitter to the final destination in Fort Saskatchewan. And when the splitter is laid on its side, it's about the size of a football field and took four days of driving below the speed limit on the highway to get it there. Number 4. Muon Electromagnet Magnets, how do they work? Or more importantly, how do they move? especially when they're as big as the Fermilab magnet. Beginning its journey in Long Island, New York, the 50-foot-wide muon electromagnet traveled more than 3,200 miles over land and sea to its final destination at the Fermi National Accelerator Lab in Illinois. The giant magnet first hopped on a barge and went south around Florida, then up the Tennessee Tombigbee Waterway to the Illinois River before hitching a ride in specially designed trucks and driving the next three nights. But when you bring something as special as the muon electromagnet, you're sure to really pull in a crowd. To make the journey a bit more exciting, the barges and trucks revealed their locations to the world via GPS so anyone could follow along with the journey and maybe even wave hello from the side of the road. Luckily, the muon electromagnet didn't pick up any unwanted materials along the way. Number 3. Big Marino We've seen giant magnets, we've seen giant turbine blades, and even space shuttles moved great distances. But how about something a little goofier to cleanse our palates? Nicknamed Rambo by the locals, Big Merino is a 50-foot-tall concrete Merino Ram statue in South Wales, Australia. Visitors can go inside the sheepish Rambo to visit the gift shop, the wool display, or to climb to the top to see things from Big Merino's eyes, literally, because his eyes are windows. Big Marino was built in 1985, but when a new highway bypassed its former location, it saw a dramatic decrease in visitors. So in 2007, it was time for Rambo to pack up his horns and move. It may have even taken 15 years of planning to get Big Marino closer to the highway, but it all worked out when he was hoisted onto a massive truck, slapped with an oversized load sign, and shipped over 2,600 feet from its original location.
Luckily, since it was a short trip, they managed to move the South Wales staple in a short period of time. And since they had old Rambo on the move, they decided to make a few modifications like giving him a new standing structure as the underbelly and even increasing his weight up to 100 tons. Number 2. Silver State Highway Nuclear Reactor And speaking of oversized loads, have you ever seen a nuclear reactor being transported along the highway? Well, many Nevada and Utah residents were treated to such a site in 2020 when a one and a half million pound decommissioned pressure reactor with a diameter of over 16 feet wide was hauled down the highway. The journey took a full seven weeks to get to the proper disposal site, traveling by railway before being hoisted and plopped onto a truck. In fact, this decommissioned reactor is the heaviest object to ever be transported over Nevada highways, and getting it across the highway was no easy feat either. It took a 122-foot-long custom-built 45-axle trailer, which had to be delivered in eight separate pieces before it could be assembled. So yeah, a lot of work went into getting this reactor from point A to point B quickly and safely. Because on top of the massive trailer, another six heavy-duty trucks and tractors were needed to help push and pull the load. In all, 4,000 horsepower was used to get it down the highway, with the entire rig weighing in at close to 2.5 million pounds. Number 1. Gulfak Sea Platform The honor of being the heaviest man-made object to ever be moved goes to the Gulfak Sea Platform in the Norwegian North Sea. But what is it exactly? Gulf Fox is an oil and gas field in the North Sea that consists of three production platforms, Gulf Fox A, B, and C. Gulf Fox C sits more than 700 feet below the ocean surface and makes up for nearly half of the entire structure's height. Just to put that into perspective, it's 200 feet taller than the Eiffel Tower. Gulf Fox C also has a total weight displacement of nearly 1.5 million tons. The structure began its journey in Vats, a small town in Norway, and made its way by boat to Stuard, but not before the concrete legs were lowered down under the cold water. When the Gulfax Sea Station arrived, barges were used to slide it onto the concrete, with quite literally zero margin for error. But now it still needs to be moved out to sea, so it took 136,000 horsepower to get the ball rolling and have her moved safely out to sea, where she's been sitting since 1989. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.